Hey, let's talk about the inner complex radio communication system for a few minutes, the IRCS. This is the primary radio system for the crew. So this would be how the crew talks to the wing command post. And if they had to talk to the other sites around town, this is the system probably that they would use. And it's also the system that is the primary means of receiving the order to launch. There's actually a special channel on the IRCS called the Primary Alerting System, or the PAS. So the antenna is for the top side. The main antenna is this one on the Four Lake Tower over here. And that's a soft antenna. Of course, it would be destroyed pretty easily in the event of a nuclear strike. So if it falls over, the crew can lift another antenna out of a hardened silo like this one right here. And if for some reason that antenna were also destroyed somehow, there's another one right over here. We still have it stowed underground, uh, and they could lift that out of, the, out of the ground also. You just press a button, and it comes uh, popping up out of the ground. So this is a, this antenna, this system, the IRCS, is what's called a frequency diversity system. So it operates on nine separate frequencies simultaneously. And some of the frequencies are for voice, some of them are for data, some of them are automatic, redundant, so like if you lose a channel, you can automatically switch over to another channel. Um, there's the primary alerting system channel, all kinds of you know fault tone channels and all manner of things like that. And all of those nine frequencies come in on a single antenna. So let's go underground and we'll see where they sort all of that out. So we are on level three of the control center, level two right upstairs where the tours go, so level three down here. Uh, so we saw the antennas, three of them, top side, the, the primary and two backups. So take a look. These big cables right here, these three big cables, those are actually coming top, from top side, from the antennas, down into all this uh, equipment here. Now remember I said that this is a frequency diversity system. And that means it operates on multiple frequencies simultaneously. So all of those frequencies, those radio frequencies, they all come in on one antenna. Uh, and they all have to be sorted out when they get down here. And so that's the job of this big thing right here. This is called the multi-coupler group. And it's these big, these big cans are actually uh, very, very sharp radio filters. And they, they permit just one frequency to go through them of all of those nine. And so uh, there are eight of them here. Actually, there are more than that. There are 16 because um, they're operated in pairs. And they filter out all of those frequencies and they route them to the appropriate receivers over here. So take a look. These are all the receivers. Now, the system also incorporates what are call, what's called tone signaling. Uh, and these are tones, like audio tones, that they send over the various channels, and those tones are used to, to turn on various receivers. So they can use that to call a particular uh, complex or group of complexes, for example. Uh, and these are the oscillators and demodulators that they use to, to send and, and, and receive and decode those tones. And then down here are the actual receivers themselves, um, and these are, by the way, all these modules are just pull-out modules. You can pull one out and plug another one in. So if something goes wrong with a particular module, uh, this, this bright yellow fault light will turn on. Uh, what, what happens then is that the crew will come down here and they'll say, uh-oh, there's a fault. And they won't bother, you know, trying to fix that particular transistor or whatever it is that's burned out or gone wrong. They'll just yank this whole module out of here and push another one back in and they're good to go. And then they get on the, the radio or the phone or whatever with the, 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 the wing command post and they'll, they'll say, we've got a problem with this receiver and, uh, and then somebody will either come out and fix it or they'll bring the whole module back with them at the end of the day and uh, drop it off and then the repair people will, will deal with that. Uh, now, transmitters are over here. Uh, there are two 1,000-watt uh, FM transmitters uh, one is operational, one is standby. 
And they always used to call these the F5 transmitters. And the reason they call them F5 is because they operate on frequency number five of those nine frequencies. So if you look right here, it says transmitter number two, F5. Uh, these are identical transmitters. It's just that one's operational and one is, is standby. And this is the way that the crew would actually talk out uh, from the complex so that if they want to call the wing command post on the radio or one of the other sites on the radio, this, these are the transmitters that they would actually use to, to accomplish that. Uh, so there is a quick overview. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's go topside, or not topside, let's go up to level two and we'll see where all this ends up. All right, so all of the equipment down on level three is connected to equipment up here on level two. This is the 465L teleprinter. This is what a dot matrix printer looks like in 1960. Uh, it's called the 465L. It's part of a system called SACS. SACS stands for Strategic Automated Command and Control System. So we talked about the system being voice and digital. Uh, digital information would end up here at the teleprinter and it would actually print out messages. Uh, and depending on how long the messages were, uh, they'd end up in a little box right here. And there was, a, there was a cutter in here that would actually cut the paper into eight and a half by 11 sheets as the message came through. So it was pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, the Air Force took the printer with them when they left, uh, but it was right inside here. There's a big roll of paper right in here, and it came up in the air, and you could hear it go clunk, clunk, clunk as it, as it cut the pieces of paper. So printed messages from the, uh, from the uh, IRCS would end up here. Voice messages, of course, would end up on the speakers. And there's a pair for the commander and a pair for the deputy right here. And the reason that there's a pair of speakers is because the wing command post, which is where we get the message, they're actually a relay point. And so they're getting the message from SAC headquarters, Omaha, Nebraska, and from 15th Air Force, which is March Air Force Base in, in, uh, in California. Those two bases would send the message to the wing command post at Davis Monthan at the same time, and then they would send it to us, and we would only hear the transmission that was of the best quality. So if one of those two was scratchy or full of static or something, the equipment downstairs would just select that out automatically and we would get the, the one that's of higher quality. So that's why there's two speakers, one's connected to SAC and one's connected to March Air Force Base. Um, so there's a quick overview of the IRCS, the Intercomplex Radio Communication System. Thanks for watching.